Welcome to God Encounters. We're so glad that you join us today. Today my guest is evangelist and speaker and rapper Mark Miles. Mark was born and raised in Northeast Portland. Due to his environment and poor choices, Mark ended up in prison twice. But it was inside of a prison cell that Mark gave his life to Christ. Upon his release, he started a Christian hip-hop outreach ministry called BOSS, which is Busy Out Saving Souls, where they go into the gang and drug zones and bring the gospel of Jesus Christ. He went on to drop a mixtape called The Crossover and an album entitled The Testimony of a Sinner, which also inspired a book he has called The Testimony of a Sinner. It's very powerful. Mark has also been active in the fight against sex trafficking. He spins and speaks time on panels to help raise awareness of the dangers of the lifestyle and what parents should be aware of to prevent their child from getting involved in the sex trade. Mark is also a public speaker and evangelist and attended Multnomah University studying biblical studies and theology. So welcome to the show today. Hey, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> yes. Thank you for having me. Yes. So before we get started, though, Mark and I did a song together. Uh, it's called I Will Not Be Silent. And so I want you to hear this song, and then we'll get started with the interview. I've seen a turn of events, another law passed without our vote. Star Wars government taking control. Losing rights yeah. everywhere you turn, riots and fights. Business is shutting down, can't keep the lights or the doors open. Police cutbacks, emergency setbacks. The leaders of the government, that's why we all set back. Yeah. When is it all gonna end? Gonna end. When is it all gonna end? Gonna end. I will not be silent. Let my voice be heard. It's flowing through my veins, it's in my DNA, cause I'm wrong. From the bloodline of a key. Election stolen, lockdowns, mandate, corona, COVID. So much confusion. Wear a mask or not, gotta get the shot. Arrest for a war, war. Once our freedom, schools in turmoil. Children suicidal, all religions seem to be embraced. But Jesus' name sounds like it's illegal. Had enough sin, closing me in. I serve a God that conquers sin. I will not be silent. Let my voice be heard. It's flowing through my veins. It's in my DNA. Cause I'm royalty from the bloodline of a king. From the blood. cannot be silent let my voice be heard feel it with your word broke a generational curse just like the old time prophets the one who stood up and spoke bold about what god said and not for a prophet there's riots in the streets and violence on the block blood stained concrete from youngins getting shot non-stop lord make it stop another one of my brothers was killed by a cop now the bottles being thrown fist in the air war zone when we need to be kneeling down at the throne praying for the peace i don't trust the government i'm following the king i hear the angels sing hallelujah standing up for human rights we all created in this image stand strong in jesus name it is finished it is finished, it is finished. fear is not my inheritance boldness freedom is filling me with this righteousness reigning with power sleeps nah he never sleeps he never sleeps nah i will not be silent let my voice be heard it's flowing through my veins it's in my dna cause i'm royalty from the blood 
So Mark, <laughs> hey. so tell us, you have quite the testimony, so I just want you to take your time and share your testimony with us today. Okay. Yeah, like you said, I was, um, I was born in Portland, born and raised in Portland, Oregon, um, during the crack era when crack was really, uh, would hit our communities really hard in Portland. And um, our environment went from being able to play outside and, and uh, have a community um, of, of a united community to destruction and, mm. and um, uh, drug addiction and pain and hurt and brokenness. And so um, I was I, I've, I, I was able to witness that, you know, from being able to have water balloon fights in, in the summertime to not being able to go across the street because of the dangers that you know, that, that was surrounding our area. And, um, as I grew older, you know, it became enticing just seeing it every day and, mm -hmm. you know, being around it. And then my mom, um, became, um, involved in drugs and, and alcoholism and partying and, and things like that. And a lot of my aunties and uncles began to get involved in that. And so, um, I began to lean that way. And um, I, I began to do mischievous stuff at first, you know, 13, 14 years old. And then um, I started getting really serious in criminal activities around 15. And then I joined the gang. And um, by the age of 16, I, was, I started really being active in the streets. And then uh, I was actually shot, well, grazed um, when I was 16. The summer of when I was 16, and um, that spiraled me into another level of entrenched in the gang culture. And um, I ended up going to federal prison when I was 18 years old. Wow. So I caught my, I caught my first, well, when I, by the time I was on my way, I was 19, but I caught the federal case when I was 18 years old. It was a shooting. and. Um, I was involved in the shooting, and um, they ended up giving me felon in possession of a firearm because I, I, prior to that, I pled guilty to drug possession and then put a felony on my record, mm -hmm. and that just gave me, pro I was on probation, but um, when I got caught with a gun, now I'm an ex-felon in possession of a firearm, we made it a federal offense, Okay. and um, I was sent to federal prison. While I was in federal prison, um, it didn't change me because my mentality was still, and my heart was still in the street. So when I was in federal prison, I just began to latch on to kingpins, um, hustlers. You got so you got to think that I'm, I'm 18 years old and I'm in I'm 19 at the time. I'm 19 years old in federal prison, and I'm around bank robbers. I'm around like drug lords. Uh, mafia mm. dudes, mm -hmm. um, Mexican mafia, Italian mafia. Wow. Um, I'm around king pimps, like pimps that had 20 women and 15 women at one time. And so it was a rich, for, for me, it was a rich learning field because of what I thought was when I come home, I'm going to have status already because that's, that, you know, that's, that's kind of like our culture in the gang culture. Like when you when you go to prison, when you come home from prison, it's almost like in the normal world of sending your your, your son or your daughter to college. And when they come home from college, wow. they, they have this, <laughs> you know, this um, 
kind of like the status. Yeah. You know, get a good job. Another notch and, on your belt, huh? Yeah. And so that's <laughs> what, that's really what it was. Wow. So you come home from prison. While you're in prison, you work out. You get strong. You get in a few fights. You get a name in prison. And then when you come home from prison, you have a new generation that's, that was 13, 12 mm. when you went in. Now mm. they're 17, 18, mm. and they remember you. Mm. And then they remember the stories. And then they, then they see you home and, they, you know, prison didn't do you bad. You know, you look, you got this glow about you. You're, you, you're hefty. And so now you have a status of OG or um, uh, a high-ranking status now. Okay. And so that's what it was when I uh, when I was in there. I was just trying to learn everything, and I knew I was going to have a following when I came home. I was going to have influence when I came home, but I needed the money, and I needed the power. Mm -hmm. And these dudes around here, you know, listening to their stories and looking at their paperwork and seeing um, they was getting tens of thousands a month. And I'm like, okay, I need to learn from you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but it was I think it was the pimps that kind of um, – took me under their wing and and I, I would say they seen I would say they discipled me into wow. the lifestyle wow you know they showed me that I couldn't get experience because I was locked up but they could it was times where I would have a notebook and would write stuff down mm. you know I would sit at the table with them and listen to how they talk to each other the slick comments and how to be fast thinking you know when when, when, when you speak when someone say something how can I rebuttal Mm -hmm. fast mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. so just things like that and so it helped it, hel it helped me to be sharp on my mind it helped me to learn how to maneuver and when I came home um, that's what I began to do you know I, I didn't do it right off top because you know it takes a woman and all this other stuff and I didn't have the hands-on experience but um, I ended up running into a, 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 a woman that was older than me and she was she was in the game in the lifestyle for close to 20 years so she will she will she will what we would call a veteran she was a veteran in the game and um she gave me the hands-on experience she the first one that gave me a, some money um from prostitution she was the first one to give me an identity as a pimp mm. because um I was just a hustler, a gangster hustler, and then um, she told me, "No, you're you're a pimp. You don't sell dope. You don't do this. You you get women. So you go out and find women." And so she, I'm like, "Well, do I go to the track or you know where do I go?" <laughs> she was like, "Portland has um teen strip clubs. Go wow. to the strip clubs. Wow. And that would be my hangout spot. Strip mm. clubs." Um, Interesting. Yeah, and so that's what I did for for close to close to thirteen, twelve, twelve, thirteen years. I was I was in the lifestyle. Mm. Um, and then uh, I traveled all around the country, getting getting money, um, different women. And then um, one trip when I was in Hawaii. Now there were several different states that you took these women to, right? Yeah. Yeah, and there was like a ring of was it ten or fifteen? On my case, yeah, yeah, there was about ten. It was eight of us, eight of us on our case. But it was so the way the media made it, made it seem like it was like a, this conspiracy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It was people that was it was it was a few dude. It was guys on my case who I I never even met before. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. Them. And so you have just like everything that you have different branches mm -hmm. or different kind sure. of, you know, so you do have that, right? You have the conspiracy of um, sex traffickers and it's more of a business mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you have the kidnappers, the, the ones who who um, actually take women and kidnap them and next thing you know they'll be in France or someplace like so that. So they sell them to other countries kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, okay. you that. Yeah. Um, and then you have... Uh, more of a more of another level of where it's more independent and it's more personal, right? So it's just you having relationships with all these women, and this and in, and and in that kind of context, you don't bring them around other men that may be competition. I see. You see what I'm saying? Makes sense. Yeah. 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 So wow. 
And so that that's that was more of the context I was in. It's more of an independent and, and the other guys that was in that case with me, that was more of their context too. You know, we don't bring we might hang out, right? Something's like there's a few other guys that I know that we would hang out, but our girls wouldn't be around. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Unless it was time to go home and you know, but they wouldn't interact with each other, you know. So did you do they ever you guys ever threaten each other like you have certain, I mean, maybe this is just stuff I've seen on TV, but mm. you have certain areas that are your area, and if someone is working your area, I mean, is that a thing or it not? It can be, depending on what state you're in. So every state is different. Okay. And then, so. What about Oregon? Can you tell anything about Oregon? Yeah, Oregon is neutral. There's no, Oregon has always been neutral. There's no, like, this is our area, this is your area. Mm. It was always Interesting. open for everybody. Wow, yeah. okay. So Oregon has always been like that. Oregon is, Oregon is, you know, one of the number one strip clubs, uh, number one of having the most strip clubs in the country. You know, so having that kind wow. of environment. That's nothing to be proud of. Right, <laughs> right. Help us, Lord. <laughs> I tell you, every time I drive by one, I'm praying, shut it down, right. Lord, in right. Jesus' name. That's, because yeah. there's also a lot of, I mean, come on. Let's be real. There is a lot of trouble and shootings and things around those Super, areas. Yeah, yeah. You know, crime is an all-time high yeah. everywhere one of those places is. The cops will tell you. Definitely. You know? Definitely. Because so. the, the elements that's involved in, in that. You know, and, and we got to, it's, 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 it's natural, it's physical, but it's spiritual too. So we got to always think, us as believers, we know that it's something spiritual going right. on. And when you have all those demonic elements in one place. Yeah that influence that it has on men and women mm -hmm. could, you know, it always pours out as destruction, yeah. you know? So, yeah. um, yeah. Okay. Um, and so the strip clubs was, the strip clubs are places where pimps frequent, you know, that's, that's like the playing field. Um, and then, like I said, so if, if Oregon is, in the top five of having the most strip clubs in the country and you look at the sex trafficking epidemic in um uh oregon right in mm. portland you look at how how many cross country and this is data right um when police arrest women across country in different states even in vegas and la and they say uh they look at their license and say oh oregon oh i know what you're doing Hmm. We have a we have a reputation cross country of having women um, engaging in prostitution. Wow! You know, um, when they look at my ID, when I'll be in Vegas, they already know what time it is. They see me in a car with two girls. Um, here goes my ID. Both of these women got Oregon ID. I have Oregon ID. They already put it together. Wow! All we know is you guys are doing out here. Wow! Because it's the reputation. Wow! And so you look at that and you see, okay, well, people ask, like, why is it so, why sex trafficking is so heavy in Oregon? Well, look at the strip club. Look at the sex industry in Oregon, you know? And you see a 12-year-old girl coming from school walking past the strip club. That, that seed is planted in her head. So when she turns 17, 18, 16, and she's hungry or she needs a place to go or mm. the environment is eating her up. Mm -hmm. The fast way to get money is right here. She's been walking past it for five years ever since she was in middle school. Yeah, and I'd say also sometimes it's low self-esteem, you yeah. know, and then someone's paying attention to you and the next thing you know you're being controlled by this thing and it's got it you is. in its grip, yeah. right? So, yeah. wow. That all comes in effect, you know, um, low yeah. self-esteem, low worth. Um, yeah. The, the context of how everybody sees you, you yeah, know, right. um, showing your body, showing, you know, you get more yeah. attention by doing that. And right. So, you know, it makes, and then this, all this access of internet now, and, you know, so it's, it's a lot of that, that comes yeah. with it now. Right. You know. Lots of things to fight. So back to your story. So you were uh, involved in, you took women to different states. Was yeah. it five different states? Uh, I, um, well, I've been everywhere. Um, I okay. would say, how many states? I would say close to 30 states. Wow, okay. Yeah, throughout my, throughout yeah. my, you know, from New right. York to, from the East Coast to the Midwest. Wow. Down South, Florida, 
Miami, Hawaii, Alaska, California, Denver, Phoenix, <clears throat> you name it, I've been there. Hmm. Um, if there was some money there. Uh, hmm. And so there's a network. We know where the money is at. We know when the money is there, right? Mm -hmm. Like Super Bowl. We know Super Bowl is going to be a lot of people during the Super Bowl. Okay. I would I wouldn't pay for a ticket to get in the Super Bowl, but I know the hotels <laughs> around where the people are staying at right. downtown. And oh, so wow. we'll, we'll book a room there. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So wow. things like the All-Star Games. We know it's going to be a lot of people in the All-Star wow. Games. Wow. Um, drag racing. Um, uh, the Kentucky Derby. Things like that. We know so it's very strategic. Of, yeah, very, very wow. strategic. Okay. You know, and then we know off days, uh, places in different states where it might be. Um, summertime in Hawaii might not be as good because there's a lot of tourists there, right, with kids. Um, you want to find conventions where men are going out there by themselves, mm. um, a company conventions and things mm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that usually, that usually is during wintertime or uh, wow. springtime, yeah. things like that, you know. Summertime, kids are out of school, so, you know, families take them on vacation. So a lot of places be off and on during different seasons, things like that. Once you're in it, you learn more on how to maneuver. So that's what I did. I just, I, I did that. And, and so uh, Hawaii, I went to Hawaii three times mm. in different, the, the exact same time because uh, um, one, of my, one of my women that I had birthday was in February and then another one was in May. So we would go around their birthdays to kind of celebrate their birthdays and then work at the same time. And uh, the last trip I was in Hawaii, uh, a girl by the name of Ivanese Harris, who was with me, um, who was my girl for about eight years, um, someone who I cared about and who I thought I loved. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the love, <laughs> let me rewind it a little bit, right? Whenever you're in a relationship, there's feelings involved. No matter if you're a womanizer, no matter if you're abusive, no matter, you have these feelings, almost like a Bonnie and Clyde kind of feeling. You know, like this is a ride or die relationship. Mm -hmm. um, you look out for me, I look out for you. We're in this together. Within that, you build a, you build emotions. You know. Sure. And if you don't know what love really is, you know this this is a strong attachment, a strong emotion, mm -hmm. right? That, well, there's a person. lot to be said about soul ties. Right. So you feel this love for this person, and yeah. you care about this person, you don't want, but it's not an unconditional love. It's not the love that we seek, the mm -hmm. love of God, you know, right. the, the one that when we when we become believers and God shows us how to love love others. Right. It was just the love that I thought I knew. Yeah. But it still was something there. It was emotional attachment. And then so... Um, we were out there right before her birthday. She went out to work and uh, she never came home hmm. that morning. And um, we were looking all over for her, um, called her mom, her mom, her mom never having talked to her and she talked to her mom every morning. Hmm. And so we knew something was wrong. So we calling around to the jails, I'm calling around to hospitals, things like that. No response, calling her phone, just going straight to voicemail. And um, three days later, so we, we go around putting out flyers and things like that, go to the police, the police, we have to wait a certain amount of hours before she's a missing person, so we mm. have to wait um, an extra 24 hours before, we, before they actually begin to look for her. And then um, uh, three days later, three to four days later, they found her body um, in the brush out in out in over this cliff where the killer tried to throw her body over the cliff and stripped her off her clothes and um and yeah so that that really broke me broke me down and sent me to a uh more of a dark place you know it didn't wake me up i was it was i was more the devil was trying to put the fork in me you know mm -hmm. I, I was getting more deeper i felt like at the time, I felt like since she died in this game, then I'm going to be a part of this game forever. Hmm. This is always going to be a part of me. Wow. Because she died for me. 
you know, she died. So it's sort of a revenge type thing. You were yeah. gonna, right? Wow. I'm finna stay in this game, and I'm mm. finna, I'm finna be the best pimp that I can, you know. So, mm. but, but at the same time, I'm broken and I'm hurt, and so I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm going further and further in destruction. More drugs, uh, more women, more just to, anything to keep me distracted from the pain and the hurt. Um, and then, um, but I was already getting investigated. A year before her, before she was murdered, oh. I was already under investigation by the feds. Okay. That just kind of stamped it. That was proof that I was out there at the time, and mm. she was a prostitute, and she and I brought her out there. Mm. And so, that was really all they needed. And then I, I um, they they had a FBI agent that was a um, undercover around us, um, and you know he wore the wire, and we talked. I talked. A, a little bit about my criminal um, endeavors, mm -hmm. and, it, and it came back. Six months later, after she was murdered, I was indicted mm. on federal charges of the Man Act and the Travel Act, which is basically bringing um, a woman across, not, not just a woman, anybody across state lines for the purposes of prostitution. I'm providing the transportation for them to get there mm -hmm. to engage in, in prostitution. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the Man Act and the Travel Act. But since she was murdered, that that raises the bar. So my point system from really, the Man Act and the Travel Act it only holds up to maybe three to four years, right? But since she was murdered in the act of it, it brought it up to 10 to 15 years. Wow. So that's that's what I was looking at. It's a wake up call, right? Definitely, definitely. It was it was a. Uh, I had to face the fact, sober now, you know. So I had to I had to. There was no distractions, you know. Being in the cell, being in, incarcerated, no, no way to distract you from your responsibility of the the action that happened, mm -hmm. and taking responsibility, and so I had to eat eat it sober minded and within that it, it broke me down I did prison time before I know how to do jail time right you know, so I, right because this is your second time now. yeah and I, and this is my second time going to prison but I was always doing like four months here in the county jail three months for mm. a violation here two months for you know so I'm always going I was always going in, in and out of the county jail mm -hmm. so I know how to I know how to go in there get to programming you know eat work out you know play cards, I know how to do that. Didn't, jail didn't stress me out because I got adapted to it. Mm -hmm. But this time is different because this time I'm guilty of something. I'm feeling this guilt in my right. heart. I'm, I'm feeling this shame and I'm feeling this hurt because like I said, we were close, yeah. you know. And we were friends too, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I knew her family for years mm -hmm. before she was even a part of the game. Mm. And so uh, I was trying to search for peace. I was looking for peace. Um, I didn't necessarily, I didn't have a plan to find the Lord. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, I just need peace. I mm -hmm. need some kind of comfort. Yeah. And so I would read like the Quran. I would read um, Napoleon Hill books, self-help books, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, uh, books for, of, of uh, meditation, how to meditate. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm trying to find peace in all these angles. Mm -hmm. But when every time I open up the Bible, I just felt just calm peace mm. you know just it was like the bible was living and breathing wow yeah you know and it was like i was gonna be all right even though the prosecutor is saying they're gonna give him 10 15 years every time i opened that bible i just knew i was gonna be all right i didn't mm. know it was a something about the word yeah and um and god and god would bring put people in my life within my time you know that would that would that would pour into me you know what I mean? And, and uh, the Bible says that one man waters, one man sows, mm -hmm. and God brings increase. And mm -hmm. that's what God was doing. One man with water, one man with soul. You know, and, and eventually God brought increase. I was um, I was uh, in the county, not in the county, I was at a F, uh, detention center. I had five months left. And um, I was, uh, I, I ran into a guy, put a, a dude by the name of um, Antonio Thomas in my life. And um, uh, it was something about him, you know what I mean? And I just kind of like cling to him. It was like, and he told me when, 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 I, 
when I didn't understand what was I thought he was weird. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, this dude is just this dude is weird or something. You know what I'm saying? He don't he's not engaging in the nonsense. You know, even in the holding tanks where we talking, yeah, man, and telling our stories and things like that. He's just quiet and he's, you know, he's he's by himself. He's not engaging. And I'm like, man, what's up, man? You know, where you from? He's like, I'm from Portland. And I'm like, oh, man, I don't know. Is he gangbanging? Where is he from? I'm seeing tattoos. Yeah. So sometimes we get to reading tattoos, too, to see, yeah. okay, he's from, you know. <laughs> but um, when we went to, when we finally got into the unit, I seen him um, with the little Bible. He had a little Gideon Bible, and I seen him open up the Gideon Bible, and I said, "Oh, he's a Christian." <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now, 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 I'll, now I'll, I have questions for him. Yeah. You know, I, I just got questions about Jesus, about God, about evil, about mm -hmm. if God existed, why so much evil in the world? And he had answers. Yeah. And he never backed down from any answer. Yeah. You know, he he did. He did 15 years, and the whole 15 years, he studied wow. the Word of God, studied history. He, he got his degree, um, correspondence through uh, a university in Texas. Wow. And so uh, he was a walking Bible. We used mm. to call him a walking Bible. <laughs> so he would answer me, but he would give me scriptures and say, read this. He would bring out the little books, say, read, yeah. read this. Yeah. And I'd be like, okay, Wow. <laughs> I didn't know that, man. You know yeah, what I'm saying? And so yeah. I would see him going to in, in the Bible study every every Monday. Um, and uh, I'm like, I'm going I'm to catch it, you know. And then one day I said, man, I'm going to go up in there and check y'all out. He's like, man, come on. I went in the Bible study and uh, one of the first questions I asked was, how is Jesus God? And everybody was giving me, and, and I had a question about the Trinity. Everybody was giving me different answers. and. Um, and so it was, it, it kind of made sense. And I was like, okay, it makes sense. It makes sense. And uh, after we leaving, it was a book. We was walking past a bookshelf and it was a book called More Than a Carpenter by Josh mm. McDowell. Mm. And um, Antonio was like, oh, this is a good book. He was like, bro, you need to read this. You know, I, and by this, t at this time, this is all God. Because usually you don't have, you don't have a single sales in the feds. Mm. But um, our unit, our unit got split up and half of our unit went to a different unit. Hmm. And so we had single sales for like two, three months. Hmm. And so I'm in the cell by myself. And he's like, man, read this, man. That's the time to read. That's the time to read. <laughs> so I'm reading the book and it was, it just hit me. I think it's everything from, you know, even from a child and different seeds that was planted in me, hmm. and, you know, different Bible verses that I do remember being young, and, you know, even the time and this, everything just, came t and it made sense you know the holy spirit opened up my heart opened up my mind and everything made sense and i was like wow this is real and i thought at first but when i vocalized it you know it's power in the tongue mm -hmm. and I, right and when i when i said this is real it was like god god just touched me in my cell hmm. for the first time i got convicted for the first time i felt fear and reverence for god for all, I have all these emotions, and I'm like, I need to get on my knees and and and, and cry out to God. And tears start coming down my eyes, and I got on my knees in my cell, and I and I just gave it all to the Lord. It's like, Lord, this is who I am. If you can do anything with this, do it. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm a I'm a pimp. I'm a gangster. I'm I'm this. This is this is who I am. Mm -hmm. If you can, what can you do with this? Mm -hmm. And uh, at that moment. God, I can feel a weight lift off my shoulders. Mm. And I just started crying tears of joy mm -hmm. and was like, wow. And then within like, I would say within like two to three weeks, it was just a lot of things to start changing. My, the way I start looking at people, the way I start looking at women, mm. um, the way I start looking at other races, because federal, and, and, you know, prison is it, separated, segregated. Mm. Um, a lot of race riots and things like that goes wow. on. Um, black table here, black TV, Mexican table there, Mexican TV, white table there, white wow, TV. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. and they keep it like that. So it won't, so you won't have a lot of racial tension. Tension. Or, okay. You know, everybody stick to themselves. Wow. So um, I started interacting with different races, you know what I'm saying? And, was, uh, and different people and um, the way I talk, I used to cuss and swear like every other word. It just changed. You know, God was just was doing stuff, and I was on I was on the phone with my um, my girl at the time, um, but she was my wife. She's my wife now, but yeah. at the time she was my just my baby mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm talking to her on the phone, 
And she's like, after the 15 minutes is about to be up, she was like, do you realize that you had you haven't said not one cuss word? <laughs> and I was like, for real? <laughs> and she was like, wow, that's crazy. I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, but she didn't understand the changes that I was, that I was going through because she wasn't a believer. Okay. But um, I can feel them. And mm -hmm. I was like, and I just had this desire just to read the word. Um, and I had Tone there. He was like my tutor. Mm -hmm. So any questions that I had that I didn't understand, I would be like, man, what did he mean by this? And he would, he would have the hist he would have the historical context behind nice. it. Yeah. You know, and then wow. about you know the Israelites going in captivity, mm -hmm. and this is David's cry, and mm -hmm. this, you know, mm -hmm. and so I'm like, oh, now it makes sense. Yeah. You know, when I right. read it, so it was, that that helped me have this desire for the word. And then um, I changed my, I used, I used to, I used to be a gangster rapper, so I changed my my music. First, I gave up rap. When I found the Lord, I was oh, like, really? I'm not going to rap, Lord. If you don't want me to rap, I don't want to rap. Because I don't know, I didn't know what to put on paper. Interesting. I always rapped about what I lived. Right. I haven't lived as, as a Christian. Okay. So I didn't know what to put on paper. But the more I read the word of God, the more of the word, when I would, now I started writing. I gave it up and I had a, I had a stack of papers of, of nothing but gangster, gangster music that I wrote while I was mm. locked up. And this is like, I was holding on to this, like for dear life. When I came home, I was going to use the media and everything that they used against me mm -hmm. to blow up in the music world. Because mm. my case was nationwide on the news mm -hmm. and this and that. And mm -hmm. So I, and people knew who I was. So I was just going to come harder. And mm -hmm. I had this big old plan. Um, and so um, I read, I read a scripture about using your gifts and talents yeah. to glorify God. Yeah. And I said, man, this is, and I, I talked to Tone about it, and Tone, he was like, well, that's a, it's a gift, man. Everybody can't do what you do. That's right. And so I'm like, well, I remember walking walking on the tier, walking past my cell, and I knew what I had to do. And you know, God was working on my heart, and I had a stack of just probably about four albums, four or five wow. albums done. And uh, that's a lot of music. I kept on walking past my cell, looking at it, and I went in, and I grabbed all my pay, all the music, <clears throat> and I said, "Lord, you gave me this gift. If you want me to do music for your glory, you have to put the words in my mouth because I don't know, I don't know how to how to how to rap as a Christian." Mm -hmm. But I said, I'm trusting you, mm -hmm. and I give it all to you. And I ripped up all the music I had. It took me a while. I had to break them up and break them up. That'd be hard. <sighs> I mean, that's. I mean, as a songwriter, I get it. Yeah, it was rough. <laughs> <laughs> it was rough. But he was doing something inside of you when yeah, he was doing that. He was doing something. That's beautiful. Wow. And then I threw it away, and uh, I, I came back later on that night, and I was like, had my empty piece of paper and a pencil. I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing came, oh. and I was like, "Oh no, I threw all my music away." But I remember, like, you know, a couple of days later, I sat down and started writing. "Repent" was my first little song. Hmm. "Repent," and I was like, hmm. and some of the word that I that I read ended up in the music, yeah, and I was go. like, "Wow!" And I went up to Tone, Pastor Tone, was like, "Hey, check this out," yeah. and he was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Okay, and I was like, man, I can, I can do this. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. after that, it was like every day a song God would put on wow. my heart. Every day I would wake up, boom, I would wake up with a beat. I would yeah. write it down. I yeah. would get up and write it down yeah. in my sleep, go back to sleep, and wake up, read it, and be like, oh, yeah. So you yeah. weren't able to have a cell phone at that time, right? No, no, no cell that phone. That would be rough for me because that's what I have to do. I have to sing into my cell phone to remember the beat. Right, right. right to stay within, you know, and wow. And that was so hard for me because wow. when, so when I first came home, when I finally got a cell phone, yeah. I, would, I would do that. Yeah. When, 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 yeah. when God put songs on my heart, right. I would do that. But it would be so hard to wake up the next day and forget the rhythm, yeah, forget the tone, and I have to look at it and like, <laughs> how did I say that last night? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. but after a while, after I just look over and look over, oh, yeah. I remember. Mm, mm, there you mm, go. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah, it was rough at wow. first, just trying to, and, 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 and a lot of songs, I did forget the rhythm. You know, oh, a lot of wow. songs like, but when I came home and I heard a beat, I was, I'm like, oh, I'm going over the paper like. <laughs> Which one does that go this to? This goes for this, you know, so it worked out Perfect. at the end. It worked yeah. out at the end. 
But wow. yeah, God put it on my heart to do do uh, Christian hip hop, and, awesome. and I changed my and uh, I changed my my whole message um, to the message of the gospel of the of Jesus Christ, and, and that's what it was. And I came home and did the boss ministry stuff. Nice, yeah. wow. Well, you've been a busy boy, that's for sure. Yeah. And now, do you go into schools and things? Because I saw mm -hmm. one of your pictures you posted on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So actually, um, so I'm an evangelist. I'm, I, I'm, I go to different places where I'm invited to, and, and, and I use the music as a tool yeah. to get to grab their attention. Yeah. And then I'll preach at the same time with, wow. in between my words. So I would, I would bring... I would use the music as a tool to get their attention, mm -hmm. the message in there, mm -hmm. and then I would give them the gospel. And so, yeah, um, schools. Um, so uh, they allow you to do your music in public schools. Yeah, you? yeah. Well, this was actually a Christian school that I that Have I, you yeah. been in public schools? I did. Okay, yeah. because I'm going to pray for that if you have not. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> once, one time, once or twice, I was okay. in a public school, and okay. I was and I was able to do my music. Okay. Um, and give them the gospel. You know. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Great. But now, um, so I'm, I'm now I'm an int intensive case manager for gangs as well. Yeah. Wow. So I'm called to um, anytime there's a shooting, um, uh, I'm on call 24/7. So anytime there's a shooting, the hospital refers hmm. uh, the person if he comes in, in within our criteria, whether it's uh, gang gang shooting and things like that. Mm -hmm. Then the 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 um, social worker at the hospital will call us, and we have to report within an uh, hour or, or within four hours. But we usually like to get there within the hour, and so yeah, I go I go in there when they're still like before they even go into surgery with mm. bullet wounds in their chest. And, wow! And um, if they're able to talk, then I'm able to engage. Wow! Yeah. And so that's what I do now. Wow. Yeah, it gets intense. It that's gets pretty intense. exciting, actually. Yeah, it, uh, it is. It is. It's, it's exciting. It's, it gets intense. Um, you know, you see a lot of, you see the aftermath of um, what what bullets do to people. Like, like even, when, even when you're in the streets and you, you may be the shooter, you don't really see the aftermath. You know, you don't right, see... Right. A lot of times you see a person fall and you leave. Mm. You know, you don't see the blood. You know, mm -hmm. it's nighttime. You see he got three hoodies on. You know, you shoot. He falls. You go. You don't see the aftermath. You don't see him shaking. You don't see him <sighs> holding on unless mm. you on top of him. You know, unless you like really personal. Kill him yeah, kind of thing. yeah, yeah. And so when you when you when you're in there, 14, 15, 16 year olds fighting for their lives, you know, uh, face wide open or mm. chest wide open, mm. you know, it's, it, um, you see the nurses and the doctors working on them, mm -hmm. sewing them up, mm -hmm. you know, getting them prepared for surgery. Mm. And, um, wow. but you know, at that, see, our, ours is a database. So I know, um, evidence based. So we know through data that anybody who goes through a traumatic gun, um, a victim of gun violence. There's a there's a four hour window where they're thinking about changing their lives. Really? Yeah, they're thinking about the circumstances. They're thinking about the situation that wow. they're in, and if you can come into that within that hour to four hours, with the option of changing and the resources to help them. Wow. Then you can get a lot of people. You know, they'll think about it. Those are seeds that's planted. A lot yeah. of them will say, "Yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to engage." I was wondering how successful you are at that because, I mean, that's an entrenched lifestyle. Yeah, it you is. You know. Yeah, it is. You know, and it's not easy to get out of it. And for the women too, you know, uh, my friend's a counselor, like I've said before, and yeah. a lot of them are prostitutes that are trying to come out of the lifestyle and or are in it. Mm. Um, it's hard. Yeah. You know, because let's be real, the money's good. Yeah, your money's good, and you built your life around the money. Yeah. So if you quit, the the car note, the <laughs> house note, everything that you've actually founded is you've built your foundation on. Yeah. It crumbles. Right. So it's hard to just say, even the, even the women that's tired of it that want to quit, it's hard to just give it up because you have you have a monthly income. 
and yeah. monthly bills that, that yeah. you know. Right. And then you have kids. There's a lot of yeah, them, that, kids Yeah, let's involved. not forget the kids that come into the yeah. picture on this stuff too, yeah. totally, yeah. yeah. Wow. And then the kids see the cycle. And then a lot of times you see, you know, you see the kids imitating their parents. Yeah, right. You know? So. Yeah, it becomes a it becomes like a generational curse. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of, you know, the environment you were in when you started into it. And there's peer pressure, too. Yeah, there's peer pressure. It's, Nobody wants to look like the wuss on the street. Right. You know, you got to be the tough guy. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, you have this persona and you have this, um, you know, you just. Yeah image that you want to present because you don't want to be picked on number one and mm -hmm. so you don't want people messing with you and right. you know and then you just kind of and there's not a lot of people saying this is wrong in mm -hmm. our environment right you know the music right. saying it's right the, right the the, the 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 what the things we watching on tv says is right exactly you know so it's, it's 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 really unless there's a ministry that comes right indirect and and challenges yeah our thinking right then this is this is this is the norm. Yes. You know what I mean? And so Yeah. We've become desensitized. Yes, definitely. You know, from you know, all the media, um, videos, music. Right. I mean, that yeah. infiltrates and that definitely um, gets people's attention and it just mm. it does something to you, you know. Yeah. What you're listening to and I always say be careful with your eye gate and your ear gate because mm -hmm what you're listening to, what you're watching, it affects you. Yes, it does. You know, and then it becomes that pattern in your mind that's hard to break, right? Right. So, um... It becomes a stronghold. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the same thing with violence. Like, I can grab, I can grab my phone. I can grab my phone mm -hmm. and look at a live execution. Oh, my. You know, that, so it desensitizes yeah. So kids know that. You, yeah. All I gotta do is Google a uh, shooting on video, right? I'm wow. gonna see a shooting on video. Wow. So 12, 13, 14, 15 year old kids yeah. has these cell phones, have wow. access to internet, and they and they're intrigued by it. Yeah. And they're watching somebody get get shot, get yeah. killed, get murdered. Yeah. When they finally have a gun in their hands, they don't understand it. They're they're desensitized from the from the destruction that it mm -hmm, causes because mm -hmm. they've watched it and seen it. Mm -hmm. Any anytime you, uh, that's why you see, you see people that come from wars who come from combat, yes, yes. right? And um, PTSD. PTSD. Oh, they yeah. might have just been medics. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They, they might have not even shot a gun, yeah. but just seeing yes. all the the murder, all the destruction, yeah. all the all the yeah, carnage. It's hard to get that out of yeah, your Yeah, it it, yeah. It, 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 it it um it, it it messes you up. Yeah. So just imagine a, a young kid that's like that, and then you got the video games. All of it plays a part. Right. You know, um, I was talking to a friend the other day. I said, "Man, young, these young kids, when you play a video game and and you die, you respawn. It's called respawn, and it, it takes thirty seconds, and you're back in the game. Mm. Right. But that's not real. It's not real. No, it's fantasy. Exactly. Yeah. And so these kids don't really have an understanding of life and death yeah you know because they're, they've been so warped with these different yeah. all these different things and it's just it's access to so much yeah information yeah and it's, it's, it's causing a lot of destruction in the streets you know a yeah. lot of destruction just in America in general you know right shooting at Texas things like that like yes we are being it's, it's, our kids are being dis it's desensitized yeah. from this stuff exactly and and it is demonic I mean yeah. God's not going to tell you to go kill somebody. No. You know, that's definitely the voice of the enemy. Yeah, exactly. And um, again, I feel like a lot of that is the music. You know, I, I've shared this before, but, um, you know, I was at the hair salon and they were, I don't know what the channel was. You know, you can get so many things on Alexa and all those different, mm -hmm. but it was so dark. The right. music was so dark. And I could feel my spirit just going like this, you know. Mm. And all of a sudden the Lord showed me it, a serpent, whoever this singer was, a serpent coming up their throat and the tongue of a serpent was, so it was like the demon was singing through right. this person. It really wasn't even the person's voice and it was dark and it was like, I was just like, oh God, right. <laughs> you know, and that's why, I mean, that's why writing, you know, 
rap is good. It's what it is is the words, right? right? The words are what make a difference. Right, the message, yeah. Exactly. What's the message in the music you're listening to? Rap's not bad. Right. God started giving me rap songs. Come on. I'm right. over 50. I never wrote rap right. songs. Right. You know, which is how I hooked up with Mark to begin with because I'm like, um, I need some help. Right. <laughs> this song is changing and I need some help writing it. And he yeah. did great, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And it was so fun doing the video and all that. But, yeah. um, you know, yeah, what is the message because that when, you're listening to? When rap, when rap first hit the scene, rap was encouraging, right? It was, it was, it was the first, the first rap was crack killed Applejack. He jumped in, but he couldn't jump back. And so it was about the warnings of oh, crack. Okay. It was, a, it was, it was more of conscious, um, um, uplifting the people. Hmm. But then the birth of gangster rap came, okay. and when gangster rap came. That was more of, it was more of them, it was more to, 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 to most of America who didn't, who wasn't around the environment, mm -hmm. it was a news flash. This is what's going on in our neighborhood. This is what's going on in our environment. Okay. But to the ones who are in the environment, it's not a news flash, it's not a news flash because we see it. Yeah. Now it's more of a, that to us is more of an instruction manual of how to mm. navigate in these circumstances because we're hearing the stories through the music and the imagery. We can see the imagery right. through the music. Yes. And then we actually see it around in our in our area. So now when Ice Cube is saying, this is how you do this mm -hmm. in this situation, mm -hmm. then I know how to react in mm -hmm. this kind of situation. Good. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's right. more of us, them telling us how to react and respond in the situation. Right. And that's what gangster rap did. It mm. gave us imagery. And we, in the imagery that we seen, we seen it around, and we started to emulate that imagery. Interesting. Wow, yeah. I did not know that. That's yeah. very interesting. But it's the message, and that's why I changed the message because um, even when they was like, "Well, it's just it's entertainment," I said, "Well, it's poison. I'm yeah. not gonna go." That's good. Out and feed my people poison. That's good. I'm gonna give them yeah. a message of hope and faith. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's where the book came from. Yeah. Hold your book up. Yeah. So, um, this one here, yeah. So, The Testimony of a Sinner, and we can get that on Amazon. Yeah. Right? Amazon. And then, do you have a website? Is no, no. Um, just on social, just social media. Okay, yeah. okay. And you're on Facebook. On Facebook, yeah, Instagram. Mark Miles. Yeah. Instagram, okay, great. Yeah, Instagram would be me, the Lenny, the Messenger. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, M E E Z I L I N I. Um, the T H A okay. messenger. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can follow Mark and see some of his stuff. So, yeah, wow, this has been so good. Thank you for your time today, and I'm so grateful for the turnaround in your life and what you're doing now for the kingdom of God. Praise <laughs> God. Thank you. Thank Seeing you. a difference happen. But um, I want you to say a prayer over those listening that might be struggling today, you know? Yeah. Um, struggling and on the fence over this so yeah go ahead and pray for them yeah. father god we just come to you humbly lord and lord i'm praying for those who are out there oh god who who's stuck in the street life oh god who's stuck in the lifestyle of destruction lord i'm praying right now in the name of jesus mm -hmm. that you you soften their heart oh god yes. lord that you open up their minds oh god well, that you bring people within their lives, oh God, to show them the truth, to show them the error of their ways, oh God, to give them the, the hope, Lord, that you give us, oh God. Lord, I pray for a, a radical, a radical touching, a radical uh, revival, Lord, in the hearts of, in the minds of those who are hopeless out there, oh God, who, who don't know any other way, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that you reach them, oh God. I pray for the women out there who's trapped in this cycle of destruction, mm -hmm. this cycle of, 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 of hurt and pain and brokenness, oh God, who's selling themselves short out there, oh God. Lord, I pray that, 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 that you, just, you just show them their value, Lord, mm -hmm. the Imago Day, Lord, that they are made in the image, in your image, oh God, in your likeness, Lord God. And I pray for those those men out there who's, who 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 are who are struggling in lust and, and, and greed, oh God, and destruction. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you just change the, 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 their eyes, oh God, that you change their heart, Lord, that they'll be mm -hmm. they'll be able to see things different, oh God. They'll see things through your eyes, and they'll they'll speak through your through, through your lips, oh God.
Yeah. And Lord, I just pray right now. I just, I just pray for my, my sister here, oh God, uh, for this podcast, oh God, Lord, for this show, Lord. I pray for her music, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, I just pray that you just do miraculous and wonderful things, and that she's able to reach just by oh, just, yeah. just by her vocal cords, oh God, just by the gift that you've given her, Lord. That that when someone hears her message, oh God, hears her voice, Lord, that it it it, it changes them that it has the power to change because it's your message. Mm -hmm. And we give you glory, honor, and praise mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Mark. This Thank has been great. You. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, friends, I encourage you to stay tuned and keep watching God Encounters. And until the next time, God bless you.